Welcome to Film in 5D, the show that sheds light on everything film in the 5D Mark II. I'm your host, Aaron Hammock. This week, we give you an introduction to lighting with a three-point lighting setup. Dude, what happened to your hair? Cut the haircut. It looks different. Yeah, cut haircut. What happened to your hair? Ah, who cares? This week we're doing our first episode on lighting, and I figured we should start off with the most common and basic scheme used, three-point lighting. Even though I have a few good lights, I decided that we would use all DIY lights so as not to discourage anybody from trying it for themselves. We'll be using three clamp lights from Home Depot, one with a 300 watt bulb, the second with a 150 watt bulb, and the third with a 75 watt bulb. The thing I love about these lights, besides the fact that they're pretty cheap, is that you can clamp them onto pretty much anything, therefore circumventing the need for stands. The three-point lighting setup has a key light, a fill light, and a backlight. The purpose of the key light is to provide the best illumination for your subject. Therefore, we'll be using the 300 watt light here. Normally, the key light will simulate the effects of an actual light within the mise-en-scene, like a lamp within a room. Yeah, I didn't realize how fake films are. Yeah, exactly. Like you see the light and you think that's where it's coming from. No, it's like this expensive $2,000 light shining on, and then a fill light behind it, and then a little backlight behind it separating them from the back black wall or whatever it is. That's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. The fill is used to fill out the rest of your subject's face and also helps to remove any shadows from the eyes. We'll be using the 150 watt light here. For the fill light, I use diffusion filters to help soften up the light a little bit. I also find that this helps to evenly spread the light across the face. And last but not least, the backlight. This light will help separate the subject from the background. We'll be using the 75 watt light here. Next, we'll show you the layout for this lighting setup. But first, a sketch? What? I don't know. Yeah, a sketch, I guess. Roll it. Hi, I'm a Mac. And I'm a PC. Mac, I'm sorry about what happened to Steve Jobs. It's alright, man. It wasn't your fault. Well, I'm having some mixed feelings about it. What do you mean? I don't know if he wanted to live anymore. Are you crazy? Steve Jobs had so much more to live for. Steve Jobs was an innovator. Obviously. I just don't feel like Apple's being very innovative anymore. Have you even seen the new iPhone? Same old phone, new package. Oh, come on. It's got 8 megapixel camera, 4G internet. So you're telling these people that they need to throw out their year old iPhone 4 and get a brand new iPhone 4S? Well, of course. How does technology move forward if people aren't being wasteful and throwing away year old gadgets all the time? Are you being serious right now? I'm a Mac. I'm always being serious when it comes to this stuff. And besides, if you want Siri, you're gonna have to upgrade to the new iPhone anyway. So that we can just upgrade again in a year from now? That's how the world keeps turning. You mean how it stops turning, right? What? What are you talking? What does this have to do with Mr. Jobs? I'm just saying, when he helped start the company 30 years ago, I think he had much bigger plans in mind other than adding a few new features to equipment every year and calling it innovation. <laughs> You're obviously just jealous. No, I'm pissed off. Well, I mean, your argument really doesn't have much staying because the original iPad was one of the greatest innovations of the 21st century. Actually, Apple was at least seven years behind with the original iPad, which couldn't even match the specs of the HP TC-1100. So? So, a tablet from 2003 had better hardware than the iPad. <sighs> whatever. You just told me the iPad was innovative. And? And, I just proved you dead wrong. <sighs> You're putting me to sleep mode. And besides, Apple products are just cooler. If you say so. Okay, so the three-point line setup is most often compared to the shape of a triangle. Oh. Oh. Because it has three points. Exactly, man. Wow, I just got that. Yep. But over the years, I've seen many different diagrams for this setup. But whether it be on the internet or in film books, they always seem to vary. I like to think of my setup as forming a right triangle. Because it's the right setup. I was just about to say that, Eric. I got you, I got you. You got me, you got me. Alright, this is because the key and fill lights are in front of the subject, 
and the backlight is behind either to the right or to the left, forming a right triangle. Though I usually put the backlight on the opposite side of the key light, every situation will vary. This lighting setup is particularly good for interviews and is used in many Hollywood films. However, you don't always have to use all three. You can just as easily turn off any one of the lights and get a completely different effect. For example, in the Matrix and Godfather skits that we did, we only used key lights to best emulate the actual scenes from the movies, but usually the position of the key light never changes. But that's it for this week. If you have any questions, feel free to send them to me via at mentions on twitter.com forward slash Aaron Hammock. You can also follow the show's Twitter at FilmN5D, and we'll be back next week to talk about the masking tool in After Effects. Oh, that's a thing we used in the uh, interview thing, right? Yeah. Wait, what interview thing? With uh, Cassandra? No. The masking masks. tool? They're wearing masks, right? <laughs> that's <laughs> what it's for, right? <laughs> that's cool. I didn't know what you were talking about until just now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Imagine tool in After Effects, you know. Like what we use in depth. Uh, you know, for space. To cut mm -hmm. out of space. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. So, it's gonna be cool. Sweet. See you next week.